Welcome back to Late Night Football. Today, we are talking about how the Buffalo Bills win the 2024 NFL Draft. Let's preface this whole thing with the Buffalo Bills are in a very strange mid-range, if that makes sense. They have the quarterback of their dreams in Josh Allen, but they just lost Stephon Diggs, who is a, an elite wide receiver, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with how he treats the locker room or acts. I think he's a great wide receiver, and you should too. And now he's gone to the Texans. So there is a big hole on that offense, and their defense just got shredded in the secondary. Everybody got cut. So, are they contenders? Are they not? When you pick this far back in the first round, it sure feels like they are. But overall, their roster just had a huge reconstruction. The Buffalo Bills will heavily rely on a brand new young core, and they're going to lean on them throughout their playoff pushes. So, let's get it right here. Seven round mock draft. Let's get straight into this thing. And I don't think the Bills should up here. They totally could. But I don't really want them to. If I want to trade up, I'll trade up from 60. 28 feels like a good spot to either get a tackle we like or a wide receiver we really like. Let's see how this falls. Bills fans, we are on the clock, and this is nightmare scenario. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Look, the tackles just wipe. We could get Morgan, but we could trade back from Morgan. How dare they? Tyler Guyton's gone. Who else is gone? All the good tackles, uh, Mims, Barton, they all got selected. No one is here left for us in our first two tiers. I know Troy Franklin's right there. I don't think Troy's a first round pick in my opinion. Maybe I eat those words here in three years, but I don't think so personally. Aladdin McConkie, you could go there. My point is, we're not picking one of these guys at 28 overall. So who is on the phone that wants to trade back? Because I am all ears. We got the Patriots, the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, let me show you guys. I know you can't see this drop down box. The Miami Dolphins, the Buccaneers 57, the Dolphins at 55, and Patriots at 34. Let's not trade super far back. So I'm thinking the Patriots. Let's go 34 for 28. And do you want to throw us 68? And we'll throw you these two? Huh? Yeah, we'll force a trade. I don't, I don't care if uh, this is actually how it goes on draft day. I'm forcing this trade. We're picking up two picks. We're getting some more top 100 picks. This is my trade. Is it real and realistic? I don't think so, but I forced it. We're okay with it. Here we go. I'm glad no one's opposed. Who are we taking off the board? There goes Morgan. That is just a shocker. It's sad to see him go. And Lad McConkey. Guys, this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. All my plans on who I wanted to pick is just getting wiped. Y'all may call me stupid. I wanted a lad. I wanted Morgan. I wanted Donnie Mitchell. I wanted Guyton. No one fell to us. Again, I hate it. I don't want to pick here. I don't want to pick Troy Franklin. I'm not about it. That's just me personally, though. So let's check the phones again. We got Jacksonville. We're not going back to 63. We're going to talk to Jacksonville. Jacksonville, will you give us 96 as well? Huh? Maybe. And you also give us uh, next year's third. How about next year's fourth? All right, y'all, this is my mumbo-jumbo trade. My whole goal of this is to get more picks in the top 100 so we can just spread our talent out because we need to fill a lot of positions of need. You see wide out, you see tackle, you see the interior D-line, linebacker, and a ton of DB prospects. Let's make it happen. Let's adjust because I don't love anybody here. I'm picking at 34, so let's keep going back. We're trading back again and again and again. Here we go. Let's see if we get at pick 48 overall because we're picking there, I promise. All right, y'all, we are finally on the clock, and I'm going to finally make a pick because it is about time. Bills are on the clock at 48 overall. We need, this is a position of absolute need, tackle or wide receiver we got to fulfill. So let's look wide receiver. Who's on the board? Keon, Ricky, uh, Burton, Devontae, Baker. We get one of those guys at 60. I'm very confident. I'm very, very confident. Let's check out tackles. What is that looking like? What is that looking like? We got Kyren. We got Kingsley. Kingsley will not make it to 60. I am very confident about that. Let's take Kingsley here at 48 overall because we for sure need to tackle. I see you guys at the next pick at 60 overall. We are back on the clock. Here we are at 60 overall. And we got a ton of picks in the top 100 now. We got 60, 68, 96, and then a bunch of 100 picks, 114, 128, 133. We got talent to spread out and develop. Let's make it happen. It's best player available right now. That is our game. Jaden Hicks out of Washington State. He's going to be my pick right here. We need him for sure. We got no DBs on this roster. Welcome, Jaden Hicks. I'll see you guys in eight picks at 68 overall. All right, we are back on the clock, and we need DBs for days. It's just a fact. I think we can still get a good wide out here at 96, but Phillips will not be there at 96. I am fairly confident in that. So let's take him here. Him or Max Melton. Okay, okay. Talk to me. I like, I like Max Melton a lot, too. Let's go with day three pick. Okay, all right. They don't like him as much as I do. That's okay. Let's go with Phillips here. Big fan of the Kentucky cornerback. We need him for sure. Welcome, Phillips. You are Buffalo Bill. See you guys in a couple more picks. All right, we are back on the clock, and all the wide receiver prospects that I wanted to fall did not fall. This mock draft has just been a struggle bust, but we're going to make it happen because we adjust on the fly. We need to get a wide out. I know it's not going to be Stephon Diggs. We can't replace something like that overnight, but we need to get somebody with promise and build a young core to go with. Jamari Thrash or Brendan Rice. That is who I'm going to pick here from USC, the son of 
Jerry Rice, the NFL legend himself. Let's take Brandon Rice right here. He's not going to be Stephon Diggs. We're going to take a step in the right direction and fill this receiver room with a bunch of talent. All right, y'all, we are back on the clock at 114, and we got a ton of picks left here. You can see we got five picks remaining in this entire draft. Lots in the top 150. Let's make it happen. Players catching my eye. We need to fill defensive interior. That's a fact. I'd like to get more wideouts, but let me show you guys. The board, it's not really there. Most of the good ones have gone. Sadly, we can't always predict what's going to happen on draft day, but we will adjust as we can. I got two prospects, three actually, that I'm looking at. We got Smith, the safety out of Georgia. We could use another safety for sure. Two, we got Sweat out of Texas right here. I know there's an incident a couple weeks ago. I don't know how that's going to shake out. But as of right now, he's still a great prospect. We cannot ignore that. And also, last one, Matt, the tackle out of Pittsburgh. We need as much tackles as we can get. He did tear his ACL, so that will be a recovery process. But in the long run, he could be something special. We pick again in about 14 picks, and I'm seeing a lot of tackles. Tackle, tackle, uh, O-line. Uh, I see about a handful of people that need a tackle. So I'm going to select a tackle right here just to be safe. Hopefully, sweat or Smith falls with us at our next pick. I'll see you guys there. We are back on the clock, and sadly, as we see, Sweat was picked at 117 overall, so I still want to fill that interior D-line rule if we can, and we definitely can. Dwayne Carter out of Duke. I like this guy a lot. He will be a day one presence for sure. Let's get this guy quickly on our roster because we for sure need him. We pick again in five picks. We are back on the clock. We've taken a corner, a safety, two tackles, defensive interior, and we got about three picks left. So we need to fit a linebacker in if we can. Maybe another DB, uh, maybe another receiver. Of course, we got a receiver as well in Brendan Rice. What can we do here? What damage can we do to get this done? Brownlee Jr., I like him a lot. I like Cole Bishop a lot too. I also could go uh, Jordan here at a temple. But there's one guy catching my eye. The more pass rushers you can get, the more I will take. Leonard Taylor out of Miami, the defensive interior. We for sure need him. Let's make it happen. Let's build that defensive interior from the ground up. We're back on the clock, and we've hit every single position besides linebacker. Perfectly, our man Cedric Gray fell to us out of North Carolina. We're going to take him right here and fill in that position of need. Good job right here, guys. Good job, Bills. We got the guy we needed. Final pick on the board for the Buffalo Bills. We have hit every position in need. A wide out, two tackles, two interiors, a linebacker, and two DBs. We're making it happen. We're doing a good job so far. Now, it's just best player on the board. When you're in the 200s, you're just throwing darts and trying to hit some kind of talent. Jalen Harrell out of Michigan. like this dude a ton. And it just never hurts to have more pass rushers on that defense. Bills fans, this is my mock draft. This is the weirdest mock draft I have ever done. We traded back twice. I wanted Mitchell. Couldn't get him in the first. I wanted a tackle. Couldn't get him in the second. So we trade back again. This is what we made of it. These are all the picks we got. We even got a fourth rounder next year. Let's break this thing down. Let's go top to bottom of this mock draft and break our new core down for the Buffalo Bills. Bills. So, our new young cord starts with Kingsley, the tackle out of BYU, Jaden Hicks, the safety out of Washington State, and then just best player available all the way down the board. We got Phillips, the cornerback out of Kentucky, Brendan Rice, Jerry Rice's son out of USC, the wide receiver, Matt, a tackle out of Pittsburgh, Dwayne Carter, and Leonard Williams, both defensive interior. We needed a linebacker, and we got one in Cedric Gray, and then we just took the best player on the board at 200 overall in Jalen Harrell. Guys, this is my mock draft. Bills fans, what would you change? Please comment below. Did you hate how I traded back twice? Kept going back and kept stacking picks. I think it was the best thing for the team, but please let me know your thoughts below because you're the true fans. If you enjoyed this video that you watched today, please drop a like because it helps me out tremendously. Go subscribe below for more content just like this. And if you subscribed and if you liked the video and you were just a super fan, we have a brand new Patreon, not here, but here. We got two Patreons in our all pro tier. Thank you, Cisco. Thank you, David. They get an additional weekly video per week and access to our Q&A sessions. And then at our MVP tier, mom is holding it down. She gets full access to our rookie draft guide. You get five draft day tips and a bonus tip, tier-based rankings for quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. And of course, a one-pager cheat sheet. So on draft day, you are marking these guys off as the draft goes by, and you're going to dominate your rookie draft for Dynasty Fantasy Football. Thank you guys for spending your time with me on the seven-round mock draft today for the Buffalo Bills. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Love you all big time. Have the best day. Peace. Now listen up, y'all. It is time for the 2024 NFL Draft Wide Receiver Tier List. And this is the first time I have ever had, I mean ever, had two players in my God Tier. Let's get it started. Introducing my two players in my God Tier. Y'all know their names. Say it with me. Marvin Harrison Jr. out of OSU. And Malik Neighbors out of LSU.